Hey, it's Kathleen. And today I've been working on a lot of special education material because I have a webinar coming up this weekend for the special education 5354 and 5543. So I was putting together some videos and things like that. And I wanted to share a little piece of that with you today. I get a lot of questions about the difference between indirect instruction and direct instruction, also, you know, diagnostic and prescriptive instruction, and even multiple intelligences, which is also referred to as multiple modalities. So I decided to extract a little bit of that video for you today and post it here. Remember, these are great for the special education classroom or for general education teachers who have students on IEPs in their classroom. But this is also applicable for any student in any classroom. These are just good teaching strategies and ways to approach your classroom. Let's get started. Now, there are all kinds of different instructional strategies that you can use with students. And again, this is not just going to be for your special ed students. This is going to be for all students. So some of the main types that they talk about on this exam are metacognitive instructional strategies, diagnostic, direct and indirect instruction, and multiple mod modalities, also referred to as multiple intelligences. Multiple modalities and multiple intelligences are kind of an intermingled or often used interchangeably when discussing instructional strategies. So metacognitive, and I talk a lot about this in my reading videos, is helping students think about their thinking. So cognition means thinking. Metacognition means we go even deeper into the thinking and start to analyze those processes. So an example of this might be something like, um, you're reading aloud to students and modeling that reading process, but then perhaps you stop and think aloud and say, hmm, this word looks difficult. What can I do to figure this word out? Maybe I'll read the sentence before again. Maybe I'll look at the picture. You're modeling your process in your mind to help figure out that particular concept or word or whatever. And it helps students understand the processes of the brain. This is essential in helping them use their brains properly and work through difficult concepts. Then of course, there's diagnostic prescriptive Think of yourself like a doctor. When somebody comes into the doctor's office, they say, I don't feel good. I've got this symptom, this symptom. And the doctor diagnoses and gives the, the patient a prescription. Well, you do the same thing as a teacher. So you don't get paid as much as a doctor, but you kind of do the same thing as a teacher. So you'll have students who are struggling on something. And as a teacher, perhaps you're a reading teacher, you can see, hey, that kid's got a little bit of problems with his phonics. And so you would diagnose that and say, he's got a bit of a phonics deficit. And then you would prescribe some strategies to help the student build up those phonics skills. So you might have them break words uh, up. You might have them work on the silent E. You might have them work, work on diphthongs or any other, other of those phonics strategies. That is diagnosing a problem and then prescribing an intervention to help overcome that deficit. So that's diagnostic and prescriptive. That's done using formative assessments, but you're constantly observing, diagnosing, prescribing, intervening. This is what good teachers do for all students, not just special education students. Then we have direct and indirect instruction. So direct instruction is when the teacher stands in the front of the room and directs instruction to the students. So this is done through presentations. This is done through giving instructions. This is done through a teacher-centered approach. Students are compliant. They're looking up at you. They're listening. You're modeling. You're explaining. You are on center stage, teacher-centered. Now, indirect instruction is more student-centered, where the teacher is there as a facilitator, but the students are actually doing most of the work. So cooperative learning, individual learning, things like that. The teacher's walking around the room, answering questions when students need it, but really they're in charge at this point. And then, of course, we have multiple mod modalities, or also referred to as multiple intelligences, and Learners learn differently. Some learners are very visual. They need visual uh, representation in their learning. I, for example, am an auditory learner. I love to put on the headphones, clean the house. I can learn so much just by listening. Also lectures. I enjoy a lecture because I'm an auditory learner. So somebody talking at me in the front of the room for long periods of time is actually a way that I learn. Not all people are like that. Some people are very social. They like to work in groups and that's where they get most of their learning 
in group settings. Some people are musical. They like to put things to music. They like to understand kind of the rhythm and the the melody of things that happen in the learning. So we have to keep this in mind as we are teaching all students and really good teachers have a way of individualizing instruction. So each student has what they need in order to be successful. All right. So I hope that helps you. These will help you on any exam, not just the special ed. So if you have questions regarding instruction, keep these particular concepts in mind when you're answering questions on the exam. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.